Welcome back to another Bakking tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to attach a light to a player so that as it moves around the light will stick with it, as well as show how to turn it on and off. So with that said, let's get started. Alright, so real quick I want to show you the map rendering settings. Basically I took the night preset and I duplicated it, named it True Night, and then I went to the light intensity, I brought that way down, and then I went to the auto exposure scales and I brought those way down. And this got me this really nice dark look, so when we place a light in there, it just really lights up the scene. So placing these lights is really convenient, but it's also a little limiting. You can't right click, convert them into events. You can't attach them to objects in here. The only real benefit they have is you can change what type of a light that they are. So we're going to add it to the player and then make him walk around, be able to walk around and everything with it. All right, so to begin changing that, we're gonna to go to resources. I'm gonna go into the reserve cast here and I'm gonna to have to duplicate this because this is the one that comes with default. You can't adjust any of the parameters on the right. So I'm just going to create a new one right here. Just leave the name, whatever. And then we're going to go to sub graphics and turn that one on. Now here in the sub graphics, you can see that it automatically gives us a sub here. You can add a new sub right here. You can also add a light. And so we're going to click on this light and click use. And then we're going to change what kind of a light that we want. So I'm just going to use uh, just a yellow right here and click OK on that. Now, by default, it's not gonna do anything and it's because we haven't put any intensity. So we wanna add some intensity. So I'll just add some right away, five. And then the radius of five looks fine as well. And I'm gonna extend this out here and now we can adjust the relative coordinate Y. Now, one thing is, is it's hard to see exactly where it is because it's just invisible. So what you can do is you can actually add a graphic here, maybe not that one, but we could go to like a basic set, an indoor, let's just grab, this looks good or let's do this vase here, water jug. And we'll add that as the sub graphic. We'll scale it down pretty small, but now we have a little gauge. So when we start to adjust this, we can see exactly where the light is gonna be. And that's way high, so we'll go one, and there we can see that's above. You can also see the light shining, and that would look like it. he's holding it down, the little shade on the head, stuff like that. So when we're done with this, I'm just going to now hide that. And now we have our light where it's at. I'm not sure the scale, I don't think matters on this. Nope. All right, so now we can play test this one and see that the light is in a much better situation. However, it is pretty intense. It's glowing quite a bit. Let's see if we can change that. First, I'll go to resources here and we will just adjust the intensity. Click it back to one. And there we go. A much little simpler light as you're exploring the area and it keeps up with the player looks really nice all right so now let's set up a situation where the player doesn't have the light at the beginning but when you pick up an object you now have that light so the first thing we need to realize is that this sub graphics right here this use if you uncheck that you won't have access to it at least on the normal scenes so you need to click this on you need to keep it on but what we have to do is we have to actually initialize a subgraphics state. Do we want this one to be on or not at the very beginning? So how you simply can do that is just in a common event, we can add a common event and we'll just add it. And this one for now, I'm just gonna say repeat once. And we're going to say on the player down at the very bottom, we're going to change the state of the player subgraphics. We're going to select the first one, which is this variable, and we're going to make it hide. We want it to hide instantly. And that is going to allow us to hide that state instantly. Still shown on the map, and but in the playtest, it will be hidden. So now I'm going to delete this one light from the scene and we're gonna place a object. I'll just type in candle and see if anything pops up here. Yeah, we'll just do this candle right here. I'm gonna plop it on the scene, maybe rotate it so we can better see it. And now what we're gonna do is give this a light and then when the player clicks on it, he will get the light. And so what we're gonna do is go to resources here and we're gonna to go to 3D stamps. Since that candle is under the 3D stamps, we're gonna type in candle. We're gonna find the one that we're using right here. And then you can see that the, it already has a bunch of sub graphics here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this, this middle flame here. And it, actually it doesn't really matter which one, I guess we could tell from the relative coordinate. So this one's at 41, the roots just blank. That one's 37, 37, okay. So this is the middle one right here. So what I'm actually gonna do is select this sub two right here. I'm gonna hit copy and paste. 
and then I'm going to scroll down. It should have created a sub five at the 41. Now what I'm going to do here, so it's already given us the coordinate of this flame, which is about right here. So now I can actually just get rid of the graphic. And then instead I can just apply a light. Now I don't know, it won't be exactly, oh, here's the history. There we go. So I can use that same history of the yellow color. Click OK. And give it an intensity of one, I believe I gave it. And that should be all that we need to do for that light. So if we hit OK and play test, it might not work. I might, yep, OK, so it does work. Awesome. And so now we just easily have to set up the event. So I'm going to grab this object. We will convert it into a custom event. I'm going to fix the direction so that it doesn't turn when I talk to it. But when we do talk to it, all we're going to do is we're going to activate a switch. So we're going to create one. We'll just call this one light active and hit OK. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to destroy itself, which is in control delete event. So it's just going to basically turn on the switch and destroy itself. And then what we're going to do in the common event, so this one will be called, we'll just say light manager. And this is actually going to be a repeat now, or you could split this up into multiple events. There's many ways to do this, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we can see that we are hiding it now, but if we have a certain switch that we'll check for, so if light active is on, then we're not going to do this. We're only going to do this if it's not on. And then we're going to paste this into here and say that it is visible when it is on. And this should be all that we need to do in order to make this work. We're going to walk up to the light here and we're going to hit go. And now we have it. Now you could have easily just left that candle. Say that you're just lighting your own candle. You could have left that candle and just took away the light by just taking away its subgraphic in the candle. There's so many different situations that you can do with this. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Like, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on Bakken content. Also consider a donation on Patreon to help support the channel. Any questions, comments below, Steam forms will get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.